Have you ever heard of the calcium paradox? It's a strange phenomenon where postmenopausal women can be losing bone density, yet at the same time have excess calcium buildup in their arteries. How can this be? How can someone be calcium deficient in their bones while having too much calcium in their blood vessels? The answer lies in a little known nutrient called vitamin K2. And when combined with vitamin D3, it may hold the key to solving this paradox and keeping your heart and bones healthy as you age. Intrigued? Keep watching to learn the fascinating science behind this dynamic duo. But first, let's talk about another famous paradox, the French paradox. Despite consuming diets high in saturated fat, the French have surprisingly low rates of heart disease compared to other Western countries. Scientists have proposed various explanations over the years, from the heart-healthy compounds in red wine to some mysterious factor in the French lifestyle. But what if the real reason has been hiding in plain sight on the cheese plate? That's right, the French's fondness for rich aged cheeses may be a major source of vitamin K2 in their diets. And this crucial nutrient could be protecting their hearts and arteries from calcification. So what exactly is vitamin K2 and how does it work together with vitamin D3? Let's dive in. Most people know vitamin D3 is important for bone health. When you ingest D3, either through sunlight exposure, food or supplements, it drastically increases calcium absorption in your intestines by up to 20 times. This calcium then enters your bloodstream. But is this extra calcium in the blood always a good thing? Can it sometimes lead to overly high blood calcium levels, known as hypercalcemia? The research is mixed. Some studies have found a link between high vitamin D intake and hypercalcemia, while others have not. So what explains this inconsistency? The answer lies in vitamin K2 status. There are actually two main types of vitamin K, K1 and K2. K1 is mostly involved in blood clotting, but K2 plays a different and critical role in calcium metabolism and distribution throughout the body. You can think of vitamin K2 as the body's calcium traffic controller. It helps pull calcium out of the blood and soft tissues where it doesn't belong, like the arteries, joints, and organs. And it shuttles that calcium into the bones and teeth where it's needed to keep them strong and resilient. Vitamin K2 accomplishes this through activating two key proteins. First, osteocalcin, which binds calcium to bone. Second, matrix GLA protein, which prevents calcium from being deposited in arteries and soft tissues. In a sense, vitamin D3 is like a calcium taxi, picking it up from the gut. But vitamin K2 tells that taxi exactly where to drop off its calcium passengers. Without enough K2 around to give directions, that calcium can end up in all the wrong places, like cruising around your bloodstream or getting stuck in your artery walls. So if vitamin K2 is so important for heart and bone health, are you getting enough? Unfortunately, probably not. Vitamin K2 is only found in significant amounts in certain animal products and fermented foods, things many people don't eat much of these days. The best sources of vitamin K2 include, first, grass-fed butter and ghee, second, hard and soft cheeses, third, egg yolks from pasture-raised hens, fourth, goose liver pate, fifth, chicken liver, sixth, beef liver, seventh, cured meats like hot dogs, eighth, wild-caught salmon, Ninth, fermented foods like sauerkraut and natto. If those foods don't make regular appearances in your diet, you may be low in vitamin K2. And that could put you at higher risk for arterial calcification and bone loss as you age, especially if you're taking vitamin D or calcium supplements. The idea that vitamin K2 is essential for dental and skeletal development is not new. Back in the 1930s, a dentist named Weston A., Price traveled the world studying the diets of traditional cultures. He noticed that people eating native diets had nearly perfect teeth, wide symmetrical jaws, and little to no tooth decay. This was in stark contrast to people in industrialized societies who had crooked teeth, narrow jaws, and rampant cavities. When Price analyzed these traditional diets, 
he found they were exceptionally rich in fat-soluble vitamins, containing up to 10 times more than modern diets. He believed these cultures were getting high levels of an activator X from foods like butter, organ meats, and fish eggs. Scientists now think this mystery nutrient was actually vitamin K2. The positive effects of vitamin K2 extend beyond bone and heart health too. Research suggests it may help. First, improve insulin sensitivity and lower diabetes risk. Second, reduce varicose veins. Third, prevent wrinkles by keeping skin elastic. Fourth, stop cavities and tooth decay. Fifth, optimize jaw development and prevent the need for braces. Vitamin K2 is a true full body nutrient that many of us are missing out on. So how can you make sure you're getting enough? Whenever possible, it's best to get your vitamin K2 from whole foods, regularly including the K2-rich animal and fermented foods mentioned earlier is a great strategy. But if you're concerned you're not getting enough from diet alone, supplementing with vitamin K2 can help fill in the gaps. There are two main supplemental forms of vitamin K2 available, MK4 and MK7. MK4 is the animal-derived form, but it's often synthetically made from tobacco leaves and only lasts in the body for a few hours. MK7 is the fermented bacterial form that lasts much longer in the body. For these reasons, experts generally recommend supplementing with MK7 if you choose to take a K2 supplement. If you're supplementing with both vitamin D3 and K2, getting the ratio right is important. As a general rule, it's recommended to take 100 micrograms of K2 as MK7 for every 10,000 IU of supplemental D3. So if you're taking 5,000 IU of D3 daily, pair that with 50 micrograms of MK7. For 20,000 IU of D3, bump that up to 200 micrograms of MK7, and so on. Of course, it's always a good idea to work with a qualified healthcare practitioner to determine your individual needs for these nutrients based on testing. But following this ratio is a good starting place for most. So in summary, the real solution to the calcium and French paradoxes may lie in the critical but underappreciated nutrient vitamin K2. By activating key proteins, K2 helps put calcium where it belongs, in your bones and teeth, and out of your arteries and soft tissues. And it likely works best when paired with vitamin D3 in the proper ratio. If you're concerned about maintaining strong bones and preventing heart disease as you age, make sure you're getting enough vitamin K2, whether from food, supplements, or both. Your entire body will thank you. I hope this has shed some light on this fascinating topic and motivated you to optimize your vitamin D3 and K2 status. If you found this information helpful, give this video a like and share it with someone who needs to hear it. And let me know in the comments what other health mysteries you'd like me to unravel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.